Almost anything is possible with a bit of planning. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Our Ham Radio Club will be assisting this weekend in the local parade. And public service events are great for multiple reasons. Now, actually, this will be my first time participating in the event. And our primary job is to line up parade participants in order and then provide a list to the TV crew of the exact order that we've stacked the participants. Now, some of the reasons I enjoy public service events is they challenge us and test our capabilities to a specific mission, while at the same time promoting the hobby to the public. Now, the weather is always a challenge here in Tennessee during the month of December. This coming weekend, well, it's no exception. We're supposed to have a high of 56 degrees on Sunday, but that's going to come at midnight. It's going to also be raining, and it's just going to get colder as the day goes on. Hopefully, the forecast holds true and that rain will clear out sometime around 11 or 12 o'clock before the parade start at 2 p.m. However, we've got to be out there and on the ground working at 9 a.m., so weather will definitely be a consideration. Now, usually, I have at least the truck, if not the RV, in tow, and I always have the luxury, when I have either one of those, of carrying pretty much any amount of gear that I want to. This public service event, though, is going to be different. It's going to require us to be man portable. So everything that we need needs to be carried on person during the entire event. So this is going to require an extremely light loadout. Now, we'll primarily be using uh, four frequencies. We're going to be using a portable repeater system for our primary communications. Then we're going to be using two different simplex channels, depending on which group you're working with for the day. In addition to that, we're going to run APRS. So let's go ahead and jump over to the workbench, take a look at what gear I'm going to take with me, and then before this video is over, I'm actually going to give you an after-action report of exactly what worked and what didn't. Now, since we are going to be utilizing APRS, I will be bringing along the portable Digipeter kit. We're not going to dig into this kit today, but I do have a full-length video on this kit and everything that it involves. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. I've chosen to take three different radios with me this weekend. First of all, I'll be using the Redivus RA89. I'm going to rely on this because it is completely waterproof. This is the radio that I sunk in the five gallon bucket of water, so I have no doubts that it will stand up to any amount of rain we can throw at it. In addition to that, I'm going to be carrying the FT5 since it will give me APRS capabilities. Now, I often run the W0 AEZ battery. However, for this particular weekend, I'm not going to be using this. I love this battery because it gives me 24 hours of uh, battery for this radio, even when I'm running APRS. However, the one downside to this battery is it doesn't give us that good weather seal around these contacts. The FT5, if we're using the uh, regular Yezu batteries, does give us a good amount of waterproofness to this particular radio. This one, I'm going to let it run APRS, and I'm going to monitor the primary frequency of the repeater uh, with this radio as well. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to use this little bitty earpiece. This is a cheap one that I found on Amazon several years ago. It only provides audio from the radio. It doesn't give you a way to talk through this little earpiece, but that's perfectly acceptable. I can use a hand mic to talk on this radio and use this to receive. But I plan on carrying this one on my back, so I want a way to be able to easily hear it if someone calls for me. On the other radio, I'm going to be running uh, one of the simplex frequencies. So that should cover all of the bases just with these two radios. In addition to the radio, I'm going to be carrying a very small sling pack. This is a Peak Design 6-liter sling 
which is super weather resistant. A sling bag is a great choice when you want to lighten the load and you don't have enough gear to justify a full-blown backpack. So let's take a quick peek at what I've got inside and you'll see it's not very much. Uh, first up on the outside pocket is going to be two backup batteries. One of these is for the FT5, the other is for the FT70. One thing about the RA89 by Redivus is I don't have a backup battery for it, so I do have one more radio in my bag, and that's the FT70. That's just going to serve as a backup in case that RA89 won't hold a charge for the duration of the event. In addition to that in here, there's just two more items. I've got one cable, which is USB to USB-C, and I've got one battery pack. This will allow me to recharge that Redivus radio. I don't know if that's really going to be necessary or not, but I did want to bring this just in case. It also, uh, this particular battery pack has wireless charging capability, so I can lay my iPhone right on top and it will go ahead and charge that with no additional cables. Now, real quick on the inside of the bag, we've just got a few more items. Uh, this right here is a bag that I am going to use. I'm going to be wearing rain pants during the event, so those pants don't have pockets. I'm going to take everything that I normally carry in my pockets and just put it in this little pouch to keep it all organized. I've got some snacks and some water in this bag as well. I believe there's three uh, bars, uh, different snack bars down inside this bag. Let's see, there's one. There's two, and I believe there's going to be one more stuck over here in this pocket. So three different uh, bars that I can munch on as the day goes on. There's the backup radio that I was telling you about with two batteries, one on the radio and one spare that you saw in the uh, front pocket. I've got a hat in here just to keep the head warm if I need that. And then the last item in this bag is going to be a foldable backpack. My thinking behind taking this, it weighs almost nothing to begin with, but my primary reason of taking this is if I want to shed a layer of clothing, maybe I've overdressed, I really don't have a place to stick that in this bag. So this is a backpack that I could use to maybe put a layer of clothing and get it out of the way, but not have to lay it down on the ground somewhere. So the total weight on that bag, not counting that digipeter because that's actually going to be deployed at my truck, but just that sling bag is right around seven pounds. So it should be super lightweight and easy to carry for eight to 10 hours. Now, it's actually Friday for me right now, but if you guys stick around, I'll give you an after action report and let you know exactly what went right and what went wrong. Two days later. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up real quick. Absolutely nothing went as I expected it to go. Weather was not an issue as far as rain was concerned. It was only cold and windy. All of the weather actually passed through last night as I'm recording this. We did have several tornadoes get dropped in the Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky area. Closest one to me was probably five, maybe seven miles to my south but zero damage here. So weather actually uh, really wasn't much of a concern today other than being a little bit cold. When I got there, I found out that I was assigned to the technology team. So me and one other guy were responsible for getting the portable repeater on the air and the portable digipeter on the air. Uh, speaking of the digipeter, I did have one minor issue with that, and that was the battery didn't last quite long enough. Almost. We were this close. I'd never run that Digipeter in cold weather. It got down somewhere around 40 to 45 degrees today. Uh, it was never warmer than 45 degrees. But uh, with that Digipeter being run in cold weather, the HT battery just didn't last as long as it has for me in the past when the battery was in a warm area. I believe the last ping I got, I'll put it right here on the screen, but I believe that was around 319 this afternoon. We were headed to the portable repeater and portable digipeater site to tear everything down about 4 o'clock, maybe 4.05 in the afternoon. So I almost made it on that. Uh, I guess a little 3 amp hour battery connected to that radio next year will give me plenty of uh, runtime on it and I won't have to worry about it. 
Uh, it, it was so late in the day that we didn't worry about going back to that uh, repeater site to change out that battery. We deployed uh, both of those on top of a parking deck. That's a four-story parking deck and had fabulous coverage utilizing that location. Taking a look at my notes, uh, I think the only other thing we really had to do was, uh, as far as the technology team was concerned, was chase down a printer at one point during the day. That's a long story we're not going to go into. And then, of course, we went back and tore down uh, both the repeater and the digipeater late in the afternoon. Other than that, really nothing uh, too unexpected. Uh, the little headset that I wore uh, that I showed you guys just a few minutes ago in this video, that thing was fabulous. The only downside to that is it uh, the battery ran dead on it about an hour before the event was uh, was over. So the last hour I was just using a uh, hand mic with the built-in speaker that was running uh, kind of on my shoulder, so it was right beside my ear. Still wasn't an issue, but uh, that that earpiece was pretty good, uh, but not as much battery as I would have liked to have seen out of it. But that is a pretty uh, small unit. So there's kind of a wrap of the way the day went. Uh, overall, it was a huge success. Now I've got uh, a few lessons learned, uh, but really nothing too unexpected. I appreciate you guys tuning in today. If you enjoyed today's information and found it helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.